before I forget, let me know what fertilizers you're using. Are you dosing daily or weekly? Uh, let me know how much you're dosing. Hi everyone, George here, and I am really excited about today's video all about liquid fertilizers. We're gonna take a deep dive. It's a complex topic. I hope you can stay with it to the end. And before I start, I wanna give a bit of a disclaimer really. I'm gonna talk about a lot of techniques that I use myself, I've used for many years now. They've worked for me. They're the techniques that I'm using in this aquarium that you can see right now. And if you've seen many of my aquascapes, almost all of them will be using this kind of same technique. That's not to say that other techniques don't work. There are many paths to the top of the mountain and the view from the top is the same as they say. You may have your own techniques that work for you. I'm not saying stop that. I just wanted to get that clear before we start. Yesterday evening, I posted on my YouTube community page and asked you guys if there was any questions, any queries, any kind of areas of confusion that you had regarding liquid fertilizers. Loads of great questions, loads of great kind of topics to look at. So what I'll do, I'll try to cover all of those off during the main flow of the video. And then I'll, I'll look at the comments again. And then if there's anything I've missed at the end, I'll try to cover those off as well for you. So liquid fertilizers, what are they? How do we use them? Loads of different areas to cover, but let's go right back to basics. And I want to tell you a story actually. Uh, back in 2003, I bought my first ever aquarium. I uh, quickly got into planted aquariums and aquascaping. And back then in the UK, I was reading Practical Fish Keeping. I was a subscriber. And a lot of the information in there seemed to be a little bit outdated compared to what I was reading on the forums back then. This was before Facebook groups, etc., where forums and message boards were the way to find out the latest information on planted aquariums. I became a huge fan of Tom Barr and I was reading his techniques about uh, deliberately almost overdosing micronutrients, macronutrients and then changing lots of water to ensure that the plants never went hungry. And the water changes were also useful to dilute waste organics and also to reset those nutrient levels. And we'll talk more about that kind of technique later. This is the kind of methodology that I went down straight away, had a really good success with but the information in practical fish keeping at the time was contrary. It was saying that nitrates and phosphates were really bad for the planted aquarium. They only triggered algae and I was experiencing the opposite. So actually I wrote into practical fish keeping almost complaining uh, and actually sent a photograph of my aquascape and I'll overlay that right now. And I was dosing nitrates and phosphates in this aquarium. So kind of proving the point that they didn't cause algae in, in this particular system. Practical fish keeping got back to me and long story short I became a regular contributor about high-tech planted aquariums as we called them back then. I talked a lot about this fertilization technique in the magazine over the years, CO2 injection, lighting, all kind of things and obviously aquascaping as well. That's my kind of background into liquid fertilizers. I've kind of steered away a little bit from the old method of adding powders, we'll talk about this later, and now I use liquid fertilizers only, but the kind of overall technique of deliberately overdosing fertilizers every day, changing lots of water every week or so, this method is what I apply to all of my own aquascapes and all of the aquascapes that I set up for clients and stores, etc. So the method that I recommend to everyone it means that you don't need to test the water necessarily for nutrient values. This can actually lead to more confusion. And it's just a very, very simple, safe and effective method of ensuring all of your plants have enough nutrients. So as we kind of alluded to, plants need nutrients. It's their food source. They need it to grow, they need it to develop new tissue, new roots, new leaves, etc. If they don't have enough nutrients, they go pale, uh, they might turn yellow, and they're more susceptible to algae issues. You get stunted growth, deformed growth, etc. So it's really important that we add enough nutrients to our aquarium. Now you can actually add nutrients two main ways. You can either supply it through the substrate, in this case I'm using a soil, you can use a regular gravel or sand with root capsules or a base layer. 
Substrate is a topic for another video, but I think it's important to discuss substrates in conjunction with liquid fertilizers because they do work synergistically in terms of that plant being able to utilize nutrients. Plants also use nutrients up through their leaves. This is where liquid fertilizers are particularly important. So you add the liquid fertilizer to the aquarium water and then the plant can use that liquid fertilizer through its leaves. Now, if you have a very rich source of nutrients in your substrate, then you might not need to add so many nutrients through the water column, through the aquarium water. So when we're talking about nutrients for the plants, we can talk about two main groups, macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients are nutrients that the plants use in larger quantities, nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and particularly carbon. Now carbon is usually supplied by uh, carbon dioxide injection, although it is available in small quantities just as a natural kind of background level in aquarium water without CO2 injection. So when people say, um, I don't have any CO2 in my tank, they actually do, it's just a very small quantity. CO2 is another topic obviously for another video. Micronutrients include elements such as iron, molybdenum, boron, copper, zinc, and some others that I can't think of right now. Um, but the good news is that you don't necessarily have to specifically aim for a certain quantity of each nutrient, whether it's a macronutrient or a micronutrient. Now, the Great news for me and to, and to everyone else, I believe, is that there are some really great products now uh, that provide all of these nutrients in an ideal ratio for most systems in one handy bottle. And this is the method that I recommend to most people. It's not necessarily the cheapest method. You can go down the dry salts method, so you can actually source the dry chemicals of these elements, whether it's macro or micronutrients, you can blend your own solutions up and you can dose them. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, there's a great article by Tom Barr all about the estimative index, which details this kind of system. But the, like I said, the great news is that we don't have to put the extra labor in to, to do the research, figure out how much we need to mix and things like this. We can actually just buy the bottle ready mixed all in one bottle and this makes it very very simple it like i said it isn't the cheapest way if you have a huge aquarium and you you know you may need to be dosing you know 50 milliliters or 100 milliliters a day in particularly large aquariums obviously it might be more cost effective to go down the dry salts method so let's talk about these all in one liquid fertilizers i like to call them like an all in one comprehensive liquid fertilizer because it's comprehensive because it contains all of the nutrients that the plants need, hopefully in an ideal ratio for your system. I won't name every single all-in-one product out there because I'll probably uh, miss a couple, but the ones that I have used myself with great results, and I know others have used with great results, include uh, Tropica Specialized Nutrition, and there's also Tropica Premium Nutrition, which I'll discuss later because it is a little bit different. The Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Food from Evolution Aqua. There's TNC Complete and TNC Light, which are very similar to the Specialized Nutrition and the Premium Nutrition. TNC stands for the Nutrient Company, which is a UK-based company. These are all products that are very widely available in the UK. If you're watching from the United States, you can get products like Thrive. There's Easy Green by Aquarium Co-op. I think Dustin Wonderlick from Dustin's Fish Tanks has his own all-in-one liquid fertilizer now as well. I'm sure there's lots of others that I've forgotten about. Oh, I do want to mention Dennis Wong's APT, I think it's called. I've tried to create a comprehensive list of all of the all-in-one products that I can find, and I'll list them in the description, and then you can choose what's suitable for you, your budget and your location. Full disclaimer, I was actually involved with the development of the EA Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Food. It's one of the very few that actually on the labelling determines whether you're growing your plants in a low, medium or high energy system. And we'll talk about 
that in more detail in a minute. One of the most important factors is the demands of the plants. So by the demands of the plants, I mean how much nutrients are they demanding? So if you imagine uh, driving a car and you put the accelerator down, the, the more you put the accelerator down, the more fuel is being used. Well, we can use that analogy in a planted aquarium. The more light and CO2 and plants that we have in the aquarium, the more we're pressing that accelerator down, the more fuel or fertilizer we need. Quite a simple relationship. If we have a, a tank with lots of fast growing stem plants, loads of light, loads of CO2, then we're gonna need a lot more fertilizers compared with a non-CO2 injection tank with plants like Anubius, Bucophalandra, ferns, mosses. And it's important to realize this when you're setting up your tank and, and establishing your own fertilizer regime. There are instructions on the bottle, but they don't know your system, your particular system. So you do need to maybe test and adjust a little bit. I will go into what I believe works well for me, and it's actually the system that I kind of used when developing the Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Food in terms of the low, medium, and high energy systems. Okay, let's talk about how much liquid fertilizer we're actually gonna dose in our system. First of all, let's split our system into three main categories. You might have a low energy system, medium, or a high energy system. What I mean by low energy, it will typically have low levels of lighting and non-CO2 injection. A medium energy system might have moderate lighting and low levels of CO2 injection, if any. And then a high energy system will have high levels of light and definitely CO2 injection. And there's obviously a sliding scale between the low to high. But we can use these three categories to really kind of start off with our dosing and see how we go. So for a low energy system, I would start off with dosing one milliliter of the liquid fertilizer for every 50 liters of aquarium water, which is 13 US gallons. For a medium energy system, I would dose two milliliters of the liquid fertilizer for every 50 liters or 13 gallons of aquarium water. And for the high energy system, five milliliters of the liquid fertilizer for every 50 liters or 13 gallons of aquarium water. Now it's important to note that this kind of method assumes that you have a high plant biomass. It needs to be a densely planted aquarium, ideally with some fast growing plants. These are going to really help to use the nutrients up and also help to avoid algae issues. That's a, a topic for another video of course. And also it's important to perform at least one 50% water change every week and this dilutes these nutrients that are being added by the liquid fertilizer. This system is basically the estimative index system tailored towards using an all-in-one liquid fertilizer. And this is the system that I've been using for the last 10 years or so, using different all-in-one liquid fertilizers from the Tropica Specialized, the Aquascaper Complete Liquid Plant Food and the TNC Complete. These are the three kind of products that are very uh, widely available in the UK. But if you're in the States, like I said, you could use Thrive, Easy Green or Dustin's Fertilizer. And there are many other brands out there which I'll again link in the description as well for you. So that is a very kind of rough guide on how I personally dose my planted tanks, whether you've got a very, very basic system with no CO2 all the way up to a high energy system like we have here. And you can see that the lower energy system, the less fertilizer you need and the higher energy, the more fertilizer you need. It's also really important to note that these fertilizers are added every day. And I normally add mine just before the lights come on. There's no real evidence to suggest if you add it halfway through the photo period or in the night, it's really gonna make much difference. But for me personally, it just makes sense to add it just as the, the lights come on. I actually use an automatic doser, a D&D P1 doser, which I've talked about in previous videos. This just sits in the left-hand side of the cabinet and I use a Bluetooth on my smartphone to set actually 20 millilitres of the Tropica Specialised Nutrition every day. It gets pumped in there just before 2 p.m. and then the lights come on at 2 p.m. For me, it just makes sense to dose every day. I think the plants respond better to small daily feeds rather than one large nutrient load. So 
If you imagine just dosing once a week, it's almost going to go through a, a feast and famine. It might use all those nutrients up in the first couple of days or so, and then for the rest of the week, they, they may be going hungry. Whereas with a smaller amount, but every day, those plants are hopefully going to get a more stable nutrient load and respond better, giving you healthier growth. Healthier growth means less algae issues, hopefully. Just to summarise, always better to slightly overdose with fertilisers than underdose. If you underdose, the plant will struggle, it'll go pale. It actually leaches chemicals which attract algae and it's just not very nice to see a tank full of struggling plants. Plants actually go through a process called luxury uptake, which means that they can take in more nutrients than they actually need and hold them in times of, I guess, in, in nature where they might need them when they don't get the nutrients that they need, they kind of store them. So we can use that kind of process to our advantage in the aquarium by deliberately slightly overdosing. And then it's important to do this large weekly water change, ideally at least 50% once a week to reset those nutrient levels, but not only to do that, to dilute these waste organics, which also can trigger algae issues. It's important to note that in a heavily planted tank and a healthy system, excess nutrients don't necessarily cause algae. Too few nutrients are more likely to cause algae. We like to dose every day with a comprehensive liquid fertilizer, including all the nutrients. Now, I didn't actually discuss the difference between the premium and the specialized nutrition. I think this is a, a really important topic. In a heavily planted tank with fewer fish, there's not going to be enough nitrogen and phosphorus or nitrate and phosphate produced by the fish in order to keep those plants healthy. So we need to add a product with extra nitrates and phosphates, such as Tropica Specialized Nutrition. Now, if we have a aquarium with a larger fish load and less demanding plants or slower growing plants, then the likelihood is that the nitrates and phosphates produced by the fish and the fish food will be enough for the plants. So we don't need to add extra nitrates and phosphates via the specialized, so we use the premium nutrition. And there are other liquid fertilizers out there which contain all of the necessary nutrients apart from nitrates and phosphates. But in my experience, for most heavily planted tanks, as long as you're not overstocked with fish, you could always add the complete uh, liquid fertilizer with nitrates and phosphates. These nitrates and phosphates are always kind of uh, seen as a, a bad thing in aquariums. And in a fish only tank where you haven't got plants, you know, nitrates and phosphates are usually a result of poor maintenance and allowing those to build up through the fish waste, etc or you might have them in excess in your tap water. And this is another important point. A lot of people get confused. They test their tap water and they might have you know, 20 or 30 parts per million nitrate and you know, one or two parts per million phosphate. And so actually they may not need to add extra nitrate and phosphate in order to keep their plants well fed. But me personally, I wouldn't worry. The nitrates and phosphates in the tap water and in your liquid fertilizer are inorganic. They're not going to harm the fish. The plants are still gonna be very happy with the extra nitrates and phosphates. And if you have a healthy planted system with plenty of healthy growing plants, then the excess, in inverted commas, nitrate and phosphate is not going to cause an issue, not going to give you algae. It's only gonna make your plants grow even quicker and actually by default, that means that algae has less chance. So try not to get too worried about these nitrates and phosphates levels. Just focus on healthy plant growth, lots of it. You know, ideally plant with fast growing plants as well if you can, maybe some floating plants. And these are really gonna help you have the healthiest system and hopefully help prevent algae as well. Okay, let's look at these community posts. I'll run through some of the questions and see if I've missed anything. I noticed some aquascapers dose trace minerals most days and only use MPK fertilizer a few times a week. Why is this? Thank you, George. Um, that's just a personal preference. They might have experimented and they just find they have better results by dosing the MPK on occasions. Uh, no one planted tank system is the same as another. So it might be once you get a bit more kind of uh, clued into your aquarium, how the plants respond to different fertilizers, 
it's something you can experiment with. But I wouldn't worry too much. Just stick, personally, I would just stick with that uh, comprehensive liquid fertiliser all in one. See how you go. And then if you want to experiment later down the line, then go for it. Uh, explanation by showing plants in different bad shapes and explaining which fertiliser it would need. Like I said, you know, I've just used the all-in-one. If I see a plant is struggling, I just add more of that fertiliser, which is going to add all of the nutrients that it needs. It becomes really complex if you try to come up with, you know, a strict nutrient profile. So you want, you know, 10 parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, 0.3 parts iron, you know, and you, and you try and come up with this kind of specific recipe and you're testing your water, you end up chasing the values, it can become a nightmare. So just by sticking with the one fertilizer with all of those things in, in a consistent dose, you can really monitor things. And if you have a super high energy system with loads of light and loads of fast growing plants, you're just gonna notice those deficiencies more quickly and you're just gonna add more nutrients. Usually, just by adding more of that all in one is gonna hopefully kind of shotgun approach and deal with any nutrient deficiencies. The mystery of iron for red plants, please. Going back to what I said just a minute ago, if you need more iron, just add more of the all-in-one fertilizer. It's got a good amount of iron in there already. If you want to, then buy an iron-only fertilizer, add that extra and see what happens. But red plants, in my experience, is just more to do with the lighting. The higher the lighting, uh, the more red you're going to promote. There is theories of limiting nitrogen to help uh, promote the red pigmentation. Anecdotal evidence suggests this is true, but by limiting nitrogen, you may be risking nitrogen deficiency from all of the other plants. This is when maybe a super nutrient rich substrate might come in handy, um, but I would limit nitrogen with caution. This is quite a common uh, topic. Will copper harm my shrimp? In the quantities that we're dosing in liquid fertilizer, absolutely not. Unless you're tipping a whole bottle in there in one go, then the shrimp and snails will be absolutely fine. Okay, our line pixels, hello mate. Is lean dosing the way forward to slow growth and improve coloration? Good question. So lean dosing, we mean dosing deliberately too little. Uh, it will slow the growth down. And if you've got good lighting, you may still have good coloration but there's always a risk of nutrient deficiency. It's a case of experimentation. Again, if you have a super nutrient rich substrate, then you can probably get away with dosing less uh, nutrients, leaner dosing, and the, the plants will take the necessary nutrients up through the substrate. And um, potentially if you've got red plants in there and they're not getting a lot of nitrogen through their leaves, this can induce this red pigmentation a little bit more as discussed earlier. So I would do so with caution. But if you're experienced, uh, which I know you are, then just experiment and see if it works for you. I think I've covered almost all of these topics. If I haven't, do leave a comment in this video and I'll do my best to answer you. Oh, one last thing, overdosing fertilizers doesn't harm fish, basically. And not unless you're dosing super high amounts. There are a few fertilizers out there which contain ammonium nitrates, which in high doses is, is really dangerous, but ammonia nitrate is actually a really great source of nitrogen for the plant, so the plants will use it before it becomes harmful to the fish. Never be scared to slightly overdose your liquid fertilizers. Okay, I'm gonna end it there, guys. Really hope you enjoyed that one. Quite a comprehensive deep dive look into liquid fertilizers with specific reference to the methods that I use. I hope you can use these lessons in your own aquariums at home and maybe improve your own plant growth and just enjoy the hobby a bit more. So let me know in the comments, have you enjoyed this style of kind of tutorial video? If so, what other topics would you like to see covered? Always interested to know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio. Uh -huh.